Craig Hankinson have been skating since 2001, so about 18 years. My name's Mark Roy. Uh, I've been skateboarding since I was 12. Uh, my name's Bernie Mullen. I'm 28 and I've been skating probably seriously since I was about 13, so 15 years. Uh, I used to hang about with him and just we would share it, but then after a while I just got more and more into it and ended up getting my own skateboard and found parks in the area and that kind of thing. Just started hanging about with people through through that. I mean, I guess can like now if you're comparing it to now, I'd say now it's definitely looked at as a lot. Don't use the word cooler, but like compared to then anyway, uh, it's definitely considered a lot uh, more acceptable now. Whereas then. Uh, you would usually get the piss taken out of you and stuff and there'd be like, yeah, there'd be kind of a bit of animosity there. Probably my earliest memory is uh, going out on my skateboard, not being able to do it and having a wee, a wee kind of play about at the end of the street and then greeting and going back up to my, my house and I was greeting to my dad saying I can't do it and stuff. And it was a, a kind of turned out to be an important life lesson because he says, you know what, you better get back out there and learn. I mean. uh, definitely my big brother. He skateboarded for about two years before I started, now he's still still his skateboard and sat on it and fired in the street, stuff like that. And then he kind of introduced me to all his mates that used to hang about in the school. Four or five people, because we were just in a wee town, well, Salcoats, just at the top of Salcoats, there was only about four or five people. At that time, it wasn't very popular. You know, there's me, my mate Danny, Johnny McIntyre, Bernie, who you're going to have an interview with. Uh, my cousin John, my other big brother skateboarded as well, and then uh, just a couple of other mates that my brothers had, and then ha Craig Hankinson. <laughs> like, I'd just go to the other school and hang about with my mates and go in and then get chased out by their teachers and stuff. Yeah, probably more. Just based on the stuff that I've done, like, the places that I've been through skateboarding, I've travelled a lot and met most of my mates, listened to most of the music I listen to now through stuff that I've done through skateboarding, so it's, yeah, it's definitely, definitely influenced me. When you were growing up? Amazing. It was the best time ever. I had ditch school and everything to go skate. <laughs> Even nowadays I've quit jobs to go skate. Like, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, if I'm not skating enough then I'll just ditch it. Uh, well, I've, I've not got any ligaments left in my ankles basically, I've just kind of, I tried, oh, I tried this before, see if it works this time. So. It was a bit of a kind of subculture back then to be honest, it was more about kind of misfits and the kind of folk that were perceived as a wee bit different in school that, that kind of congregated together to be honest, the folk that weren't uh, good at fat bar or, or whatever else, they kind of found each other through the kind of skateboarding and BMXing and I've been skateboarding with the same folk I've been skateboarding with since I was about 14. So I think everybody knows each other, uh, especially in this kind of area. It was always about just everybody hanging about, and I've never experienced that in any any setting I've ever been in, any social set. But the actual ambition that I really had, like everybody obviously wanted to be pro and get sponsored and everything like that. Because it's Scotland, there's no, no really big opportunity for it. Like if you were that kid back then and say you were in the right spot for it, matter like there was good companies but maybe it could have happened because some of the boys were like really really good and you'd be watching videos like I could do that. Do you want to just sum up what that word means to you? Well that's what I'm saying it's just there's a bit of debate on this now maybe you need to get someone else to clarify but I, for me I always thought it was someone that skateboarded but was kind of ashamed of it in that sense or it was didn't really think they were they were too, that into it that they could call themselves skateboarder. So they wore, maybe wore like a skateboarding hoodie, but like tracky bottoms and, you know, not didn't wear skateboarding shoes. And if any of their mates that didn't skate asked them if they were scared, they're like, oh, no, I'm not scared. So maybe they, that was what I would regard as a yicket. But apparently it's up for debate now. I don't really know. I've, I've obviously got it wrong all these years. No, I didn't so many years either. I don't think anyone uses it anymore. So, I don't know. Well... My big mate Tosh um, used to jump about with fingerless gloves and a big duffel jacket, <laughs> um, a big pair of black, a big pair of black boots, um, and we used to call him Marv for home alone. So, <laughs> so that's probably the, the image that I conjure up when I think of Yikka. Hey, when I hear the word Yikka, it just reminds me 
like my thirteen year old me with chunky trainers, the big baggy denims with the stripes doing them, a big baggy hoodie or something and just somebody that just skateboarded every day but it was a bit of a bit of a weirdo, a wee bit of a reject. And just I don't know. So it is a hard thing to put under one spectrum. Because if you skateboarded you were a yicket. 